crane load charts. This can be tricky to understand if you're new to crane operating. If you've just got into the industry or if you want to get into it, um, this is very important to know. But it can be quite daunting to, to, to know what you're looking at and how to read these charts. Because uh, you've got numbers and, and sort of figures and degrees and stuff all over the place. So uh, this video is for tail cranes only. I'm going to do a, another two videos, one for mobile cranes and one for telehandlers. So this one's for tail cranes only. I'm up a tail crane now, my one. This is a CTL 1600, a Terex, a Commodore. Before you can read a crane load chart, you need to know what sort of crane you're up. So I know I'm, I'm up at CTL 1600. I know how much this will lift, maximum. Six, uh, it's 66 ton, but this one's a bit different. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, I know that I've got 55 meter jib, and I know that I'm in three falls rope. Those pieces of information are vital. So it's difficult to see. Oh, you might be able to see my hook. So let's put that up. It's difficult to see. You can just about see there. I've got three falls of rope. It's easier to see on the crane next door. He's doing a lift at the moment. So he's got three falls of rope there. That's the same model as me same configuration yeah so th he's got three pulls of rope and he's also got a 55 meter jib I'm lucky let me just spin my chair around a little bit I'm lucky enough to have three charts up here um, there's a reason for this so this one is my standard one uh, this one is what is, is my bread and butter. This is what I, I use to do everyday lifts in general. Uh, this one is for TPP. So this this crane gives me an extra 10% if I hold the button down. Gives me T, TPP. In certain situations, it gives me an extra 10%. But um, I can only do one motion at a time with that, and the hoist is very slow. And this one, this is a special one, this is a 70 tonne, so this crane, so this is a CTL 1666, so it's good for 66 tonne, the same as the one I showed you over there, but if I program something is in, it, on this on this job, there's a there's one lift, or two actually, that are, that are 70 tonne, so you can just about see down there, there's a green hopper can't really see that well but there's one I installed previously that green thing is a hopper that uh, that weighs 70 tons so they're the, they're the two heaviest lifts that I do on this job so to get to be able to lift those um, I need to program something in into my computer uh, to be able to lift that 70 ton yeah so the reason you need load charts is because let's say you're operating the crane uh, let's say for example someone a slinger or crane supervisor says to you hey Jim um, how much can you lift at 40 meter radius yeah said so if you have the thing oh, I don't really know you go to the chart you think all right I'll have a look at that yeah I'm good for so and so ton oh mate cheers but you can have a look on your screen as well because it gives you what you're good for at the radius that you're at so let's show you that for a start on my screen all screens will be different and all charts will be different but my screen I'm at 25 meter radius there 25.5 meter radius and at that radius it's telling me I'm good for 66 ton yeah 66,000 kilograms yeah but I have to actually be at this radius to know what it's good for I can't look at this and think oh at 40 meter radius I'll be good for so and so some cranes like mobile cranes you can program it in and say yeah that's what I'm good for if I go to that radius, but on, on these you can't. I'll go with this one, the TPP one, because it's a good height and um, I can see it easily. So, <coughs> all right, so on here you have, I've got, my, I've got my serial number, I've got the year of manufacture. This is actually the crane's duties chart, which gives these pieces of information. Uh, you've got the on this side, on this column, you've got the jib length, yeah? I've got a 55 meter jib. On this side, you've got the radius in five meter increments. 
uh, you've got a full to rope, one full or single whip, two fulls, three fulls, yeah? So I am on, this is my area, because I've got three fulls rope, so I need to be looking at this area. I know I'm good for six to six ton at standard, so I know I've got 55 meter jib. So let's say, for example, someone wants to know how, like I said, how much I can lift at 40 meters. I go along, down at 55, go along to 40 meters. I know at 40 meters, I'm good for 50.05 ton. Yeah, as you can see in this diagram, make it a bit clearer. But my maximum lift, my maximum load of 66 tonne can only be lifted up to 30 metres. After 30 metres, the capacity gets reduced. Further and further and further, yeah? So at the end of my jib, at the end of my jib, 55 metres, I know uh, I can lift 35.7 tonne. That's my maximum radius. Some jibs have got a, a longer, but my one is only 55, so that's what I'm good for at the end of my nose. Yeah, 35.7. But this isn't precise because these are only 30. Uh, these are only five meter increments. Uh, so the actual precise radius that I can lift, uh, the precise uh, yeah radius that I can lift 66 ton uh, is over here in this section. So if I go follow the 55 over. 66 tonne is actually at 30.79 meters. That's as far as I can lift my full weight at, yeah? Uh, what I've got to take into account for that is the um, the rope, the amount of rope that's down. So sometimes, like at the moment, it's only showing I've got one kilogram of weight, of weight on. I've got no accessories on there, I've got no chains or anything. Uh, so when there's, when there's chains hanging down, or shackles or lifting beams or whatever um, then I've got to deduct that weight from my capacity so for me to know how much I can lift let's say a load weighs 10 ton yeah and I'm going over and I'm only and I'm only good for 10 I'm only good for 10 ton if I've got two ton of accessories on then I can't lift that load yeah because the accessory is going to take it over so you've got to deduct that because that's your gross weight, you've got to deduct that to make it your net weight. On mobile cranes, you also have to take into account, getting a bit ahead of myself, you don't really need to know this in this video, but on mobile cranes, you have different size hooks, so you can choose what hook hook block you want on, and they're different size, which means they're different weight. So you actually have to deduct the hook off a mobile crane chart as well. But it, you don't have to on towers. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Low charts are gonna be different. You get all sorts of different load charts. Every manufacturer will have a different style, different ch chart to look at, but the principle is still the same. Yeah, you just follow the jib. You, you, you find out what, your, what configuration you're in first. You know what sort of crane you're in. You follow the jib length number. You follow the radius number, and you go down and you find your weight. Yeah, simple as that, really. Uh, it can be quite daunting because you've got. I mean, if you if you look at that now, it just looks quite daunting because it's just loads of numbers but it's not really you just you pin you just pinpoint you just narrow it down so I don't need all of these I know that I only need this section and then you just go down to find what you need go across to find what you need and it's simple okay so that's that I say I'm doing another two videos one for a mobile crane load chart and one or all-terrain crane if you want the official term and one for a telehandler load chart they're all different uh, different styles and different ways of reading them so there you go um, another thing quickly if you want to check out my podcast got a podcast out now it's on YouTube it was only on Spotify um, goes out at the end of each month the end of a month beginning of uh, beginning of month sort of sort of like that crossover interviewing all different people in the construction industry and um, finding out what their roles are how they got into their roles uh, learning a bit about the industry, what challenges they face, that sort of stuff. Um, in case you want to get into those roles and it sort of 
to get in, enlightens you on some things okay so um, at present at the point of filming this um, episode 3 so it's growing it's getting more and more popular so yeah look out for that at the end of each month the construction cogs podcast but that's it for me now hope that was helpful for you leave some comments because I like to interact most importantly subscribe yeah because it helps the channel it helps it to grow and it helps to get more information out there for all of you like and subscribe see you soon I'm proud of you